All right, we're on with uh, Dom, Dominic Rapson from Origins Nutrition. Thanks for jumping on today, Dom. Cheers, man. Appreciate it. Good, good to speak with you again. Yeah. Second uh, podcast with Dom. We did one in Bali live. Uh, I fuck knows when that was, a couple of years ago, or a year and a bit ago. Yeah, um, a year and a bit ago, man. That was actually really fun. So that's yeah, what I was looking forward to being back. We are vibing off each other and I was like, oh, what better way to get Dom on season two um, on the relaunch. But Dom, if we met you at a dinner party, how would you introduce yourself for no one that knows you? So um, what I normally would say is I help people with chronic and degenerative diseases and I help to enhance performance of professional athletes and people passionate about just fitness and movement. So I'm an ancestral nutritionist with a holistic coaching background and my aim is to provide longevity, performance outcomes, and to reverse many of the chronic diseases that we see today that are man-made circumstances that we shouldn't be dealing with. I like it. So people would label you as a carnival. Um, you maybe label yourself as a carnival ancestral nutrition. A lot of that goes opposite to veganism. So in your opinion, Dom, why is veganism bad for you? I <laughs> love that. That's the straightforward question. Why is veganism <laughs> Straight for the jugular. Not, is, is it possible that veganism is bad for you? Like, just no. Why? Is, well, I'm glad you you asked it like that because obviously, um, if they would, if they went back and listened to the previous podcast, they would know my journey, which we spoke about being vegan, feeling it out firsthand, um, also being part of many of the groups, being very much of an activist in it as well, and always preaching it. Um, yeah, you would know that I've been there, done that. And now getting into the whole biochemistry of veganism and getting into the biochemistry of how meat responds to the body, also studying deep into anthropology, also looking into soil health and climate. I have a whole host of, well, facts as to why veganism is bad for you. So I guess we can start with... Um, not shelling health and then I can go on to the other bits so that this is obviously a long conversation yeah. on it. So we could do a whole podcast just on this. Yeah. But, but um, just your, your cliff notes, your highlights, the uh, hard, hit, hard hitting <laughs> stuff. So when you go vegan, you are malnourishing your bone marrow stores. A lot of people are going to be like, what the hell does that even mean? But the key to longevity is amino acid stores in your body if you malnourish this by eating a bunch of unassimilable nutrients that you need to combine or supplement, you're eventually going to starve those marrow stores out. And it takes about 15, 20 years before you see real malnourishment. You will have chronic symptoms that most people may not even recognize leading up, mostly due to the anti-nutrients in most plants that we are consuming. Um, most of these plants that, if you look into the history of them, are only about 12,000 years old, created in the agrarian revolution. These still carry many nutrients to protect themselves. Unlike animals that, cannot, that can run or that can fight back, plants use chemicals. And when you load up these chemicals in your body for a long period of time and you do not provide the essential nutrients that help the body methylate, detoxify, rebuild and rejuvenate, these very compounds start to build up in your body and they're actually potentially to most people cancerous in the short term and definitely cancerous in the long term. They're also diminishing your potential for cholesterol. Um, that's a deep subject, but also if cholesterol, which is the makeup of every cell membrane and component of your body and precursors to your hormones, you're diminishing your potential to create more cholesterol. You're trying to recycle cholesterol you are bringing down your immune system and you are slowing down and also dismantling the intracellular activity that carries every single nutrient into your body. So you're going to get malnourished. Does that answer that bit? I can go much deeper. Yeah, yeah, we, we, yeah that's cool. We went, uh, we went off on a few, but something that caught my attention there was the cholesterol thing. So every doctor you ever go to, they're like, oh, cholesterol is bad for you. You need to lower your cholesterol. Can you dive into that a little bit and maybe why cholesterol is good for you? And then there was another test that you can take that I remember you telling me about, um, which is better than a cholesterol test. Yeah. So with cholesterol, Everybody gets scared. They think, oh, high LDL. Oh, no, that's so bad. And they say good cholesterol, bad cholesterol. There's no such thing as good or bad cholesterol. It's just all necessary. It's good cholesterol and excellent cholesterol. 
So when people say your cholesterol is super high, most doctors want to put them on statins or lower their cholesterol, want to make people vegan or plant-based in order to lower their cholesterol, which is ridiculous. Before I even break down the biochemistry, I would just like to say for things for you to look into your, in your own studies is that low LDL, low cholesterol in total is linked to stroke, hemorrhagic stroke as well, especially in women, is also linked to heart issues and heart diseases. And when most people do studies and see that people with heart disease have a raised LDL, that's actually the LDL trying to protect and it gets raised at that certain period, but it's not the reason why you have that heart disease or issue. And low LDL is also linked with a host of mental illnesses due to the lack of intracellular activity of nutrients and connective pathways to the brain. So anxiety, depression, aggressive behavior. They did studies on where most of the people that committed violent crimes or had depressive actions and suicide all had low cholesterol, low LDL specifically. So LDL is low density lipoprotein. Its function is to pull in all of the fat soluble nutrients you're eating from the animal fats and then pulls it into all of your organs and tissues in order for your mitochondria and cells to transform it into energy um, and building blocks. It's also precursors to your hormones, especially your sex drive hormones, your fertility hormones. That's why most vegans, most plant-based people, most people with low cholesterol eating poor foods have low fertility rates and actually become infertile or suffer chronic diseases of fertility, such as endometriosis, for an example. Um, HDL is high density lipoprotein that is the scrubber so that comes away and takes rid of the waste exchange because for every exchange of creation and energy there is waste especially from the mitochondria so HDL cannot fit through it goes in the bloodstream pulls out all the waste and takes it back to the liver in order to be recycled or to be excreted by the body and detoxified so it's also raising your T cells and your immune system. High cholesterol means more immune system. If you look at the people with the highest rates of longevity in the world, they were the highest consumers of animal products and had good high cholesterol. High cholesterol helps build muscle because of that intracellular activity also. So everything about having high cholesterol is ideal. What most people get confused with is triglycerides and inflammation of the epithelial cells and um, the pulmonary systems. If you have free-flowing triglycerides in your body, those are fat molecules that are floating around in your blood. As long as when you get inflammation, those build up and cause blockages. Most people get free-flowing triglycerides because they don't have enough LDL and HDL to take care of it. And they're eating inflammatory foods that raise that inflammation in, such as vegetable oils, polyunsaturated fatty acids, and high sugar processed foods. It's like the American diet, the standard American diet. Yeah, the sad yeah. diet, right? So a good indication to test if your cholesterol is healthy is dividing your HDL by your triglyceride number. And you need to come with a number that's below two. If you get a number that is below two, that is a good indication that you have a balanced triglyceride, which is your own fatty tissues, to HDL, which means that you are able to clean away at each time. If you get a number higher than two, it generally means that your HDL is too low and your triglycerides are too high, which means you have room for disease potential, which only happens if people are eating a load of crap, high sugary foods, or not getting enough of the right cholesterol in from healthy sources, such as saturated animal fats. Other, real, other one and real tester, which all carnivores go through because it's something that's been pushed onto us for a long time because people always want to say, oh, your calcium is going to be all built up, is the calcium arterial score. And we all seem to get a test score of zero. So, okay. boom. So, <laughs> Sean, so, Sean Baker is doing some research on this at the moment. Is that right? Where he's actually funding some studies or raising money for studies into carnivore or just meat-based diets. Is that right? Do you, can you shed any light on that? Yeah, he's currently, um, well, I think he's done it already. He's raising funds to do a full clinical trial on himself of every marker of the body over a period of time, which is going to be mm. quite exciting. We have but he's had, already like healthy though. So like, yes, yeah, yeah. he's already healthy in a sense. He's done calcium arterial scores, gone zero. He's done cholesterol and testosterone tests, all good for his age. He's very young for his age. He's breaking world records. He's extremely fit. He's recently been um, 
been experimenting with higher protein, different fat ratios and losing weight and building muscle. So at the moment he's quite, he's lost a lot of weight. He's actually shredded a lot. Mm -hmm. I don't personally think it looks as good, but he's just showing that even uh, 53 years of age, um, just over three years carnivore, he can build muscle and he can shred and he can look as jacked and as shredded as a 20 year old. Yeah, I like it. I appreciate veganism. I appreciate carnival. I appreciate people that go either end of the spectrum because I like the outliers and I like the fringe people and I like to see what they're about and their arguments. So I can respect it. I had a, one of the clients of mine, she was a vegan for five years and recently just took up eating meat again. It took me a good two years of knowing her to kind of have nice. an impact on that. But uh, yeah, she was like anemic. She was having um, iron transfusions. She was having multiple iron transfusions that just didn't work. Like they just flat out didn't work. And the doctor was like, I think you need to eat meat. Um, Bro, so five years crazy. in, we got, her, we got her back on meat and she's smashing PBs in the gym. She's feeling better, less anxiety, less mental health issues, all those kind wow. of things. It's which, crazy um, how instant. Yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna draw causation and effects on all that yeah, stuff. But yeah, you know, enough, like but... anecdotally, you know, she's better, which is great. There you go. Which is funny because so, like the past, um, the past two to three years, you just see all the vegan influencers dropping like flies, getting mm. sick or eating meat behind the scenes. So, yeah. Yeah. It's been funny. I like, I love watching your page. I love watching Sean Baker. I like, I love watching these guys cause it's, it's a bit of comedy, but, uh, it's like it's some good information as well. Like obviously they are, they, he does have an agenda where he's, that he's trying to push, which is, which is clear. Yeah. So why is veganism taken off in your opinion in popularity? Um, oh, another, another deep one. I mean, it's, it's funny that f follow the money trail, follow the control over the food and it's going to be pushed more and more as the, the more we become into this science religion where the scientists can manipulate and control all our foods and then gradually shut down all the family farms and manipulate the soil and, make more corporate interest and more corporate involvement in the, in the relationship of human beings and food is why we're starting to see veganism as such a big push. It's like, why eat meat when you have meat alternatives? Um, they got 500 ingredients. We can give you this supplement. <laughs> so we've gone from nature to lab. Nature yeah. doesn't provide as much profit as what lab does. So we have a lot of puppets, influencers, you know, people that push the vegan agenda and they are puppets of these corporates, you know, Going, to, going around restaurants and fast food restaurants, like, look, they have impossible burgers now. Look, you don't need to eat meat. You can have this soy replacement. So it, it's pretty deep. It's, um, it's deep rooted in the, in the financial status and the control over our food and how we use our land. So where the money We're goes. We're going to continue to see it. Yeah. It's, it's hard to know where, like, obviously the truth lies somewhere in the middle. Uh, and finding what works for the person. But, you know, have you seen The Social Dilemma on Netflix, the new movie? No, I haven't. Yeah, basically, what you search, you just keep it keeps getting populated. So if you go down a rabbit hole of, of something, Facebook, Instagram, Google are just going to keep taking you down that rabbit hole because you're engaged yeah. in that rabbit hole. So I'm trying to be aware and say, all right, cool. Maybe, uh, maybe I'm in a rabbit hole of something. Maybe I need to step back and, and see other alternatives and other opinions on, on a certain rabbit hole. Maybe I'm too far in carnivore or vegan or an alternative. What are your thoughts on that? Um, that's, my point on that is if you're studying just for Instagram and social media, you've gone wrong already. <laughs> no, I don't mean I'm studying. Yeah, I don't mean, I don't mean media. you, but I yeah. mean, most people in general are. Well, yeah. I saw this article on Facebook from yeah. this one influencer and it's like, well, where, did you, did you open the biochemistry textbook? You know, have you studied and looked at all the videos and all of the research from each and individual scientist doctor out there? Yeah. And then have you gone and walked the experience? This is what people are failing to do. And the reason why like veganism is getting so big is because there's so much good propaganda, so much good design around it and influence and triggering people emotionally that um, it's, it's flowing pretty quickly. So you get a lot of vegan hate on your social media. What, uh, how do you deal with it? Like, is it more science-based arguments or what goes on? It's never science-based, unfortunately. <laughs> because once you it's bring the science to them, yeah. You know, once you bring the science to them, they either dismiss it, say it's not good enough or request more of it. And then you give more and it's always been a waste of time. Yeah. So now I don't bother. I don't get as much anymore because people know what I'm about. And I've yeah. been around long enough now that they, they see how, I, how, um, how I'm doing. They see my clients' results. 
they have nothing to argue. And then the few that have come at me trying to argue with emotional fallacies, red herring, straw men and stuff, I've publicly shamed and embarrassed with logic and being calm and just providing facts and just showing how their behavior is normal, that the rest have seen this on my stories. And I guess they don't want a piece of that action. Yeah, it's a good laugh. If you're not following Dom, check him out. It's good. Um, so with all that in mind, what's the number one most overlooked practice or discipline in nutrition? So the most overlooked practice or discipline um, I would say is something that we learned in high school is being able to understand what a study is, being able to understand what controls, variables, the differences in hierarchy of studies, such as epidemiology, clinical trials, um, peer-reviewed studies, and then understanding what causation is, what correlation is, what hypotheses and conclusions are. And this is the most overlooked thing in nutritional practices. You see, even see it in doctors. You even see it in fitness professionals or nutritionists. They will be taught certain studies, but they won't actually understand how to make a study, how to break down a study, and where, what it actually means. Okay. So the basis you know of scientific that. understanding. Yeah, like di dissecting information, critical mm -hmm. thinking around the information, how it's presented, um, breaking down different aspects of how it's put together to see how conclusive it really is. Okay. Interesting. I guess, yeah, unless you've been to uni or you've studied a field of science, it's pretty hard to go and learn that. And for someone to go out and self learn scientific understanding and reasoning is, is obviously well outside someone's ballpark, even if they're interested in it. Yeah. In, in, in the depth. Yeah. But this, this is stuff I learned in year eight of high school in yep. science, you know, how to write a, a study, how to put all the study, how to measure how you're going to do the study. What is a hypothesis? What is a conclusion? What are the controls and the variables before you then put the thing in the test tube and do the study? Man, did so, you go to Harvard in year eight? What, what, they teach you that in year eight. <laughs> I was still learning two or two in, in year eight. <laughs> Wait, is it, I'm not, is it the same in Australia? Year, yeah. year eight, I would have been, Probably, uh, yeah, year eight, but yeah, we weren't learning 13, that. 13 years old? Yeah, we were learning about the history of Australia and um, algebra, useful stuff. Useful, yeah. <laughs> so what's something you wish you knew when you first started out on your nutrition journey? Because I remember you telling me um, on a couple of times you met, you've done Paul Check studies, you've done some integrative nutrition stuff. Um, so what's the one thing you wish you knew when you first started? It's a good one. That's got me thinking. What did I wish I know? I, I, I wish I knew the power of meat and <laughs> Me trying, trying me only when I was at a younger age. Man, I couldn't imagine how crazy strong and wild I would have been if I started this when I was 19. What age did you start? Uh, I've only been carnival three years now. Yeah, okay. But I mean, nutritional studies I've been doing for seven years now. So I've been in nutrition yeah. seven years. But... Yeah, I wish I, I wish I would have, yeah, I wish I would have started this like when I was, I wish I would have looked into meat only nutrition and the biochemistry of the human body and understood holistics when I was 19. Yeah. Man, I would have, I would have progressed so much faster in every sports study discipline I would have ever done. Interesting you said that when you came to the gym and you spoke to our members that you converted a lot of people to meat that day. Uh, it was pretty funny to see the reactions after. We had a couple of guys that went like full carnival and they still are carnival since that. Um, and that's Bro, amazing. I really love that, man. That's, that's so good. I had such a good time there, man. I still follow most of your members. You, you guys are like fam. It's like legends there. So yeah, yeah I've, been, I've been seeing, man. It's so epic. Tom is your number one fan. Voice was taken. Oh, Voice is killing <laughs> it, man. He's yeah. getting into nutritional coaching as well. Yeah, he's doing health coaching at the moment, which is awesome. So besides health coaching, nutrition, what's got you curious at the moment? What are you studying? What are you looking into? Apart from nutrition, mm. just 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 skating and surfing, man. Project, <laughs> project, project Beach Bum at the moment, bro. Nice. Enjoying <laughs> Bali. Enjoying Bali. No, I'm, I'm trying to... 
right now, maybe this is that kind of like midlife crisis thing when not midlife. Dude, you're crisis, already thirty. <laughs> yeah. What What do they call the one for thirty? It's, it's like something big happens at thirty. What do I'm they dirty. call it? On? I'm dirty thirty. That's what I call my girlfriend. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but whatever the 31 is, it's now like I'm at that point in life where I'm like, maybe I'm actually a grown up now. Maybe I need to really figure out what kind of longevity uh, in sport and movement do I want now? I'm yeah. so over, I'm so over like bodybuilding, I'm so over calisthenics, I'm so over most gym related stuff at the moment, man. So yeah. I'm just right now, I'm just kind of going through a crisis of figuring out. Like what I want to do. Like obviously, I still want to be really strong, so I practice right. some cali. I still want to be super mobile and healthy joints. So I do the mobility that my uh, partner, you know, Nettie, Nettie Up Your Rom instills. Um, but I'm pretty much skating and surfing every day. I'm trying to lose a bit of uh, muscle weight, trying to drop down to 80 kilos. What are you now? I'm, I'm about 84, 85. You're like a big 85 though, you know? Like I look at you, I'm like, let's go to 100. <laughs> This guy's huge. I don't, dude, somebody else said that to me this morning. If I was like 90 something, yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's like as you get shredded, you just look, yeah. I don't know, just the shape well, of the muscle, I guess. You look good. I think you've been doing some ollie lifting, which is nice. It's good to see. I'm um, back in. Yeah. Back that's back. like, I'm just doing light ollie lifting now. Like, that's, that's really it as well. Yeah. So, what's something that people misunderstand about you, Dom, being a carnivore or in life? Um, most people think that I, I think that everyone should just eat meat. Like, that's not really what I think. It's not about being carnivore. It's, and people think that I'm, I'm on proponent of just being like a meathead or something like that. But no, like, uh, I just want people to understand where the real nutrition, the density of nutrients is. I want other people to understand what's going on with taking control of our food and how we need animal husbandry. And it's also to know that I'm a guy that's all about experience and fulfilling life's many joyous experiences and learning and experiencing as much as, as much as possible. So my whole thing is to die young as late as possible, seeing and doing everything. I may not be a master, but I want to be a jack of all trades in everything possible that I enjoy. And that's what I'm trying to inspire people to do. It's not, Hey, look at me. It's, Hey, look what can be done. Why aren't you doing something too? So you're being an example. Yeah. Quite philosophical, the way you go about it. So, Dom, <laughs> if you could have a meal, uh, preferably a steak, with three people alive or dead, who would they be? Oh, that one's going to take some thought there. So three people, all at the yeah. same table together, enjoying a nice big Wagyu ribeye. Yeah. Who would it be? Who would it be? On the beach in Perth. On the beach in Perth. Just to add you're definitely you're definitely gonna be there then. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it'll probably have to be. I'd love to sit down with um, Carnivore MD, so Paul Saladino. Yep. Primal Edge Health, Tristan. I was actually just watching one of his uh, one of his videos now. Dude, dude is hilarious, extremely smart, and also talks a lot about uh, what's going on in the world at the moment. So check out Tristan. Peak Prime Ledge Health. Maybe it'd be, it'd be excellent if you guys got on a podcast. Very interesting mm. guy. And um, the third guy, hmm, probably Dr. Gregor. I just want to know how full of shit he is and if he farts throughout the whole meal. Who is Dr. Gregor? Is he? Dr. Uh... Gregor is, is, you know, we have Lord Sean Baker. He's Lord Vegan Gregor. <laughs> <laughs> I have to check him out. I don't, I, know, I don't know two of those guys. I know Paul Saladino. Oh, man, so you've got to check him out. He's not like the most beautiful bag of soy as a male example you could ever see. Everyone always says like Arnold Schwarzenegger or, you know, like Rocky or fucking Joe Rogan or something, but you've given me three nah, interesting not people. Interested. Not interested. <laughs> cool. Dom, what's um, a question I should have asked you, but I haven't? You should have asked me, but you haven't. Um, that's a hard one, actually. You've always been, you've always been on point. Um, I don't know. A question. Didn't have much thought on this one. Question that you should have asked that you haven't. I gave him like five minutes of prep time. I sent him over a couple of questions <laughs> just before, and then I put him on the spot with some world-breaking questions. 
Yeah, this one's a good one. I mean, I guess um, relatable to you now is what kind of work have I done with cancer? Mm. Yeah, tell us. Well, I've worked with uh, five different cancers and um, this is something that actually boosted my confidence a lot in going back into meat from veganism um, and from studying nutrition. And some of my first clients had cancer and I wasn't licensed or practicing at the time as a company. They just trusted in that I had done a lot of studies and had been practicing um, ketosis. And um, I was completely successful with uh, stage two and stage three cancers. And that led me to work with um, some more stage three cancers. Uh, one of the colon and uh, another one of the stomach. One was uh, testicular and another one was breast cancers and uh, was uh, completely successful with every single one. So that one gave me a huge boost in knowing that meat, before I even studied the biochemistry of meat, did not cause cancer, and that the vegan agenda and the whole meat causes cancer was bullshit and was a big agenda for something much more than just food. Have you ever had anyone challenge you on that, the cancer thing? Yeah, yeah, that's cancer and heart disease. Um, it's the most brought up thing. Meat causes cancer. Mm. But yeah, I, I tell them from my own experience. I also tell them how, how cancer works. So I know the biochemistry of cancer. I know the biochemistry of mTOR. I know the biochemistry of methylation. I even just did my own podcast on methylation that released um, this morning. So like, I, I give them all of that. And then I give them countless other doctors that break down all of the, all of the, the studies that I mentioned earlier, you know, how the study breaks down what epidemiology is and how all of the correlations to cancer are false. So, and then I also give them examples of vegans that got cancer. So, yeah. And don't have it now or still do or, or have gone into remission? Oh, died. 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 Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, not cool All the vegan them, but, people you know. with cancer unfortunately <laughs> die. Yeah. Yeah. Rest in peace. So, yeah. Dom, how do people find you? Um, as you pointed out, thanks a lot. Uh, Origins.nutrition on Instagram is where most of my shenanigans go on. You get to see a bit into my personal life. You also get to see stories um, of things that I find relevant to share, things that I have to say. My podcast is Origins Cast. That's where I put up 15 minutes of biochemistry talk. No bullshit, no fluff, just straight biochemistry. 15 minutes, simplified. And um, originsofvitality.com if you want to know more about me specifically in a work in a professional manner. Awesome. It's been great to have you on, Dom. Thanks so much. Hey, man. Thank you, bro. It's been good catching up.